One of the things that makes knitting socks fun is finding different ways to knit the heels and toes and then swapping them into your favorite sock pattern. In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate a cuff down sock toe that is easy to knit, can be finished without grafting if desired, and fits a wide range of toe shapes. I call this sock toe the spiral toe, but many people call it the star toe while others call it the round toe. Knitting techniques often have multiple names as well as share the same name. I've done previous videos demonstrating the star toe and the round toe, which are different toes than the one I'm demonstrating today. I have links to those videos down in the video description if you're interested in comparing them. So I'll start with an overview of the toe construction, explain how to know when to start the toe, and then launch into the demonstration. I'll also give you tips on reading your knitting and dealing with mistakes. If you'd like to jump to a specific point in the video, you can tap or mouse over the video playback area of your screen to reveal the chapter titles and starting points of each section. So the basic method for working this toe is that you need a multiple of four stitches. If your sock does not have a multiple of four stitches, then you need to work a setup round that decreases your stitches down to a multiple of four. So if you had 66 stitches, for example, you would need to eliminate two stitches in a setup round. And you can do that with the last two stitches of the first half of the round and the last two stitches of the entire round. And that would bring you down to a multiple of four. From there, you are going to work a decrease round that where you decrease four stitches and they're going to be evenly distributed. So you're going to, every decrease round is going to have four decreases. And then you're going to follow it with a plain round where you're just working in stockinette. And you're going to keep doing that uh, until you have about a third of the, your stitches remaining. And then you're going to skip doing plain rounds. You're just going to be working sequential decrease rounds instead until you're down to just about eight stitches. And then you have a choice of fastening them off like you would for the crown of a hat so that you would not have to graft that shut or you could choose to graft that shut. I have another little sample here where I did graft them closed at the top. So that is a preference. So if you really hate grafting, you don't need to with this particular toe. We're gonna assume that we're gonna have a sock that has 64 stitches. So I mentioned we're going to be working four decreases for every decrease round until we have about a third of the stitches remaining. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what a third of the stitches is going to be. Well, if we divide 64 by, th by three, we're gonna get like 21.3. It needs to be a multiple of four because we're getting rid of four stitches every time. So a third of the stitches is going to be about 20. So I wanna show you this visually. Uh, so that would be this point right here. I'm gonna draw a line here. So this is the point where we are working sequential decrease rounds. Up to that point, every time we do a decrease round, we are going to work a plain round after it. So we can either draw these all out and so we can just visually look at how many decrease rounds there are until we get down to a final number of stitches, which is eight. And we can just count them up and say we have 14 decrease rounds. And then this is the place where we are going to stop doing plain rounds. So we can see that 10 of these decrease rounds are going to have plain rounds after that. So we can say, okay, that's 14 plus 10, and that would be 24 rounds is going to be the total length of this particular toe. We can do this by calculating instead. So if you prefer to do calculations, I'll show you how to do that. You're starting with 64 stitches and you're going to end with eight. That means that you are eliminating 56 stitches altogether when you are doing your decreases. And you're doing it four stitches at a time. So 56 divided by four is equal to 14 decrease rounds. Now, remember we said when we have about a third of the stitches remaining, we aren't going to be doing plain rounds. That means we are going to do plain rounds up to and including uh, when we have 24 stitches on the needles. 
So all the way up to here, we're going to have a plain round after every decrease round. So that means we're going to start with 64 stitches. And when we are down to 24 stitches, then we're going to shift. That means that we are going to eliminate 40 stitches before we shift to no more plain rounds. 40 divided by four per decrease round is equal to 10 plain rounds. So that's how you can do it by calculating. And this is how you can see this uh, visually, what's going on. But now we need to figure out well, how long is this toe actually going to be? And for that, we need to know what our row gauge is. So if we are working with a standard sort of eight stitches per inch, you probably have 11 rounds per inch. So if that's the gauge that you were working at where you had 11 rounds per inch, you would have uh, 24 total rounds divided by 11 rounds per inch. Uh, so that's about two and an eighth inch. So that tells you how long your toe is going to be. Uh, for example, if I want my sock to be nine and a quarter inches long and my toe is two and an eighth, then when my sock is seven and one eighth inches long, that is when I would start this toe. I have 64 stitches on the needle. So that's a multiple of four. I want to divide the round evenly into four sections. So I'm working magic loop. So I naturally have the round divided into halves already. So I really only need two markers. I need one right here. And then I need one halfway through the other needle. You can do this toe on flexi flips or four double points or five double points, anything you want. So however you need to mark the four sections so that you know where you are, where the beginning of the round is, where the middle of the round is, and where those quarter sections are, use as many markers or as few as you need to get yourself started. Every time you work a decrease round, you are going to be working up until you are two stitches away from this marker and then you're going to work a knit two together. So I have two stitches left until I get to the marker. I'm going to work a knit two together. Slip the marker and then I'm going to work until I have two stitches remaining before the next marker. And for me, that's just the end of this needle. So I will work until I have two stitches remaining on the needle. Then you repeat this process for the second half of the round. So I've worked that first decreased round. Now I'm going to work a plain round. So when I get to a marker, I'll just slip it. I have worked one decrease round and one plain round. So if we look at the stitches, we know that we worked the decrease in the last two stitches before the marker. So the marker's right here. And we can see that this is where that decrease is. You can see how those two stitches merged into one and the one on the left is on top of the other one. And then right above it, we just see a regular stitch. That shows us that we have worked our plain round. So for this half of the round, I'm going to leave the marker here so we can see what it looks like uh, before we knit it and then after we knit it. So there's my marker and we can see we've got one regular stitch and then one column of stitches that was the result of the previous decrease. And we're going to work those two together. And so we've got this little diagonal line forming. I'm going to get rid of the marker and we're going to knit until we have two stitches left on the needle and work that decrease. Now this time I'm going to take the marker out and we're going to read the knitting so that we can tell where we are supposed to knit. Okay, so I'm approaching the decrease. I can see that this is the decrease stitch right here. So this is where the marker would be to the left. So it's these two stitches that have to be worked together. I'm looking for that decrease. That one has to be worked together with the stitch to its right.
And when it comes off the needle, we can see that those two stitches that have merged together are directly under the needle. That's how we know that this is the actual decrease round, is when those two stitches are right below the needle. And then we come to the end of the round and we work that as a decrease as well. So once again, it's time for a plain round. If we put our knitting down or if we can't remember whether we just worked a decrease round or a plain round, we look below the needle. If we can see the, that decrease right below the needle, we know that it's time for a plain round. I'm getting close to the point where I'm going to need to stop working plain rounds after my decrease rounds. And so what I like to do is just count my stitches every so often to make sure that I have the correct number. And what I had noticed was it in the, the final section at the end of the round is I had one stitch fewer than I had in all of the other sections. What had happened was there was a section where I worked three, uh, where I worked decreases three rounds in a row. So what I did when I realized I was short one stitch here was that uh, when I was working my most recent decrease round, I just skipped working that decrease. So I'm gonna have a few plain rounds in a row uh, where I had a few decrease rounds in a row. There's no need to rip back and, and redo that all when you are off like that. I just compensate for it when I uh, realize that I've made that kind of an error. I just compensate it by skipping one of the decreases in that particular section. So I've gotten to the point where I am down to 24 stitches and I've worked a plain round after every one of my decrease rounds. So now I'm going to shift to doing my decrease rounds one after the other. I'm not going to work any more plain rounds and I'm going to do this until I have eight stitches remaining. I now have just eight stitches remaining. So you really have a couple of options here for how you finish the toe. Uh, one is that you can fasten off the live stitches in the same way that you would fasten off live stitches for the crown of a hat or you can choose to graft those few stitches off at the end. So let me show you what the difference is. This is a sock toe where I fastened off the stitches. So you get that little cinched circle, like a drawstring closure. Uh, and for this one, I did the grafting of those a few stitches that were remaining. So it's really up to you which you prefer. If you are a knitter who doesn't enjoy grafting stitches, then use the fasten off method. That's what I'm going to do right here. You just slip the stitches off onto your threaded yarn needle. I don't cinch it, cinch it up super tightly yet. I like to go back through the stitches a second time. You can see it's coming out of this stitch and you can, see, if you uh, look for the strand of yarn, you can see it going through all of those stitches and you can follow the path of that yarn around the stitches. So I've got them through the second time. and then you can cinch them closed. And then you insert your yarn needle down through uh, the center of that. And then pull it tight. And then you'll uh, weave in your ends at the end. So that's what it looks like if you use the drawstring method and this is what it would look like if you actually grafted those stitches. Either way is fine, there's no right or wrong way, it's just a personal preference. For you toe up sock knitters, I will do the toe up version of the spiral toe in an upcoming video. If you have any comments or questions about this video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.